proposition is that when you're in business, you don't want to be number two from the top or from the bottom. Being the cheapest ain't going to get you anywhere other than to bankruptcy. The thing is to be the most expensive. Now, see, look at that straight away. You're blown away. Because your belief system doesn't allow you to do that. Because you don't know, how can I be the most expensive when I'm struggling to survive being in the middle or even the cheapest? I can't get customers when I'm the cheapest. That's what I meant about knowledge. You are the way you are because you don't know. So, what I'm saying here is this. If you're not the best in your business, then the market's not going to give you an opportunity to exist. And why should they? So, if you're going to a company, sell your product and service to a company, whatever product and service that you've got going, if that is not irresistible enough that the company can't, possibly say no to you, then you don't deserve to be in business. Because as soon as your customer has a choice of saying no to you, they most probably will. The point is to come up with a product and a service that the company that needs that you can give them in a way that nobody else can, but that massively benefits them, that meets their needs and their demands. And they turn around and they look at the board meeting and they say, how do we say no to this guy? And the question never is about the price. The question isn't how much should they pay you. The question should be, will you do it for them? Will you agree? Now you see this conversation I'm having here is beyond most people. Because 95% of people struggle with the basics and I'm talking on a level where the top 1%, the top 5% do business in this way. They engineer their product and service and they put it in front of a company where the company doesn't say how much you want for it, say please can we have it, will you give it to us? Because we can't afford to lose this. Now. How many of us have got a product or a service that actually would sound like that to the person you're proposing it to? We don't. At best, if you've got a product and a service, there's 50 other competitors that are doing better than us, let alone same as us. So why should the customer pick us? In your business life, in the work that you've done, why don't you have a look? How often have you sat down and thought about this, the customer? Nearly never. That's why the results are success or nearly never. It's all about the 1%. They do things differently. They think about the long-term relationship. So they build, they engineer a product that is going to be adding massive value to the company or the individual that they're talking to. That's the secret, to build a product or a service and put it in front of a company that doesn't question how much you want for it, so the price is not an issue anymore. You could be the most expensive, they don't care, they want it, number one. Number two, it's not the question of should they have it from you, is will you give it to them? And that's how, that's how these successful people do it. They build a product and they make you beg for it. And they put a price on it that you never worry about the price. Now, of course, you would have to put this product in front of a company that's got deep pockets. Because if you're having to put your product in front of somebody who's, has, who's, who's a resistible offer, brilliant, but they haven't got the money to buy it, then you're selling your product and service to the wrong people. You need to design a product and a service that meets the needs and the desires of the company, that solves a huge problem for a company or an individual that they can't solve without you and money is not an issue. You're looking for a person that doesn't have a money issue doesn't have a co or a company that doesn't have a money issue. They have a problem issue 
They want a resolution to the problem. That's the 1%. That's the 5%. That's how they do it. They build something that people want, need, desire. That solves people's problems. Look at all the big things that have happened. I'm not asking you to build a spaceship. You can do this with any business. Let's take something small like plumbing. In every city, every big size city, you probably get about 5,000 plumbers. 5,000 plumbers. Sit all 5,000 down, have a look at what they're doing. At best, they're within 10% of each other. Prices, services, everything they do is exactly the same as everybody else. But if one guy comes out and he says, everybody's charging £4,000, for example, to fit central heating and boilers and radiators, right? So the drill is £4,000, one week we are done. That's supplied and fitted. Everybody's doing it between 3500 and 4500 as an example. You come in, a new guy comes in. He's taken special training from a special business mentor. And he comes in and he says, well, the cost of radiators and a high quality boiler to me is £1,500. With the pipes and everything, £2,000. The cheapest in the market is 3500 fitted. The expensive is 4500 I will sell mine for 4500 So we're going to go for the expensive, not the cheapest. So my cost is two and my output is four and a half thousand. Okay, so I make two and a half thousand pound profit. Now how does he beat the competition? So he goes in there and he says to them, I'm going to put a four and a half thousand pound system in there for you. Done? Done. Now what am I going to do that's different? Number one, you think of about ten different benefits you can give this customer that others are not doing. So you are the expert in central heating, so you come up with those what those ten are. Number one, if you use this where you chuck in the boiler for free, I bring the price down to say about 3,800 weight, be patient. You've taken a little hit on the price, but you're going to sell a lot more systems. So you've let go of the boiler, so you've saved 700 pounds you've lost there. Then you sell them for the next five years, I'm going to give you 1,800 pounds of benefits for free. What's that? Every year I will come and clean your system with a power jet that's taking all the rubbish out of your pipes and your boiler for free. It would cost you £300 to have it done. I'll do it every year for the next five years. He's got his own machine. It takes him two hours to do it. That's £1,500 saved there. Plus, I guarantee the whole system for five years. Anything goes wrong, I'll replace it for free. Plus, I'll guarantee the boiler for seven years. Now, if you add all that up, yes, they've given you £3,800. You tell them the system's 4500 I've given you the boiler for free. So the customer feels for 3800 they have had a system fitted that's worth £6,500. Nobody else is doing that. You could even charge 4500 if you like. But because you've given them five years every year cleaning their system, because after a year or two years it builds up the scales inside the pipes and the radiator and the boiler, and the boiler starts breaking down three, four years down the line, everything gets mucky inside the system, it needs to be cleaned. But these other 4,000 people that are doing central heating, they're too busy doing central heating systems, they don't care about the customer. But you, this one man, is going around putting systems where he does care. And every six months you show up at the door. Just do them a quick, make sure you bleed the radiators dry for them. Now you might think, oh, that's an inconvenience. If looking after your customer, giving value to your customer, they can't get elsewhere. If that is an inconvenience to you, then you shouldn't be in business. Because that's not how the top 1% do it. They look at the customer. They want customers sitting in a pub and say, guess who called at my door? It's the guy who fitted our central heating. One of his guys came over and bled our system, dry, did everything for us, replaced a few handles there and there, and didn't even charge us anything for it. It was only there 20 minutes. If you were paying somebody £300 a week wage, just going around to put the, your customers, just making sure they're all good, right? How many customers do you think that would bring you in a year? And how many companies do you know that do that? 
The same guys on 300 pound a week, that's all he does all year long. Every day is going to customers' houses, bleeding their radiators, servicing their boilers, jet cleaning the system for them. The whole thing is all paid for. And you're doing that. You're going into every single property once or twice a year, make sure they're happy. What do you think is going to happen when things go wrong? When do you think it's going to happen when they, they, somebody, somebody else asks for advice as to who to go to? And that's my point. If your product and your service is not on a level where it gives the customer way beyond their expectations, you don't deserve to be in business and that's why 95% of people go bust.